thank everybody for coming, and I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters in the day for hosting this event. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a magnet coach in the New Haven Public Schools. I have a sixth year degree in educational leadership, um, MS in elementary education. I've been on the Board of Education for I'm in my 14th year now, uh, one term on the council. I also teach confirmation in my spare time at St. Joseph's School, and I do a various number of other things in my spare time. Uh, I'm a Democrat petitioning on the ballot um, for a state rep in the 39th district. I bring a lot to the table, a lot of experience. Um, there are a number of reasons why I'm running, and I'll outline those throughout the debate and in the closing statement. But I uh, have some ideas, and uh, the main reason I'm running is uh, I don't want to, I have a 12-year-old daughter, and as I see the, talk, see the governor today talking about all these taxes, it's a mess in Hartford. And I don't want her to grow up in a state with this mess, with all these their things out of order. And now I'll introduce Kat Goulart. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for all coming out on this super cold, super icy evening. And thank you to the day and the League of Women Voters for hosting us. Um, my name is Kat Goulart. I will, uh, I'll hit the resume points as uh, we go through the debate. Um, in, in my opening, I'd like to highlight a couple of things for you. Um, first is, um, to talk about consistency. We have Governor Lamont, who, before he was voted in office, got there by promising us he would only toll trucks, and anyone who saw the news today knows that that's not true. Um, we're, we are here because Chris Soto was elected to do a job that he is not doing because he took a better job somewhere else, and now you know we are where we are. Um, we have the four of us who are all very different. Um, there's Jason here, um, Myrna, and um, Anthony, and we'll talk about that all. Uh, however, for me, I am a moderate Republican. I have always been that. I am cross-endorsed by both the Republican and the independent parties, which I think speaks to that moderacy. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kat. And now, Myrna Martinez. Good evening. Um, thank you again, League of Women Voters, and the day for giving all candidates a voice here today, and everyone for coming out, um, despite the threat of of difficult weather today. Um, I am a third term Board of Education member, have served as a president of the Board of Ed um, this past year. And um, as I'm, I'm a teacher first though, and at some point teaching realized that there were structures in the classroom that were preventative of us moving forward and I heard that it had to do with policy. And so my love of policy um, began from there and has been blossoming into something larger right now looking at many different areas that create structure for us residents here in Connecticut. We have wonderful assets in the state, um, uh, natural resources, um, but we also are fourth, um, we are the 41st, 41st in infrastructure and 41st in fiscal stability, and we need to put things into place to help correct the path that we are in, which I hope that you'll hear in a few moments. Thank you. Um, thank you, Myrna. And now, um, it's my pleasure to introduce Anthony Nolan. Good evening, New London. My name is Anthony Nolan. I'd like to thank the woman, a League of Voters and the Day newspaper for having us here this evening. Um, thank you for coming out in this weather. Um, within a month, I will be 19 years as a New London police officer. Um, along with that, I was a school resource officer for several, er for several years in all the schools. Um, I was the dean of student at Isaac School. Um, I served on the Board of Education, uh, I believe it was in 2007. Um, the past seven years I was on City Council. Um, I have two years as President on City Council um, and am uh, United States Navy veteran. Um, every, every day I walk the streets and see how our neighbors are struggling, struggling to pay bills, struggling to um, pay co pays, getting good jobs and health care. Um, I have some ideas on how Hartford can give us the help we need, like raising the minimum wage, um, changing some of the laws as far as criminal justice, and I was told to stop. <laughs> well, you'll have more time later, Anthony. Yeah. Once you get the cane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now begins the question portion of our evening. And the first question will go to Jason Catala. So, Paul? Uh, you're on. Oh, and he will speak for 
60 seconds. Well, he will be debating with, with Kat. Correct. He will answer the question for a period of 60 seconds. And then Kat will answer the same question for a period of 90 seconds. The same question will then go to Myrna and Anthony, and they'll each get 30 seconds to respond. And as I told you in the end, they'll all get equal time. But this is how it starts for the first question. You ready? All right, uh, as was noted earlier, uh, we, when we announced this debate, uh, solicited that there were questions from the public to email me, and I, I got loads of questions. I, I can't get to all of them just because of time constraints and where it made sense. I tried to sort of merge multiple questions, but I thank the public for their uh, response to that request. We got a lot of questions. Some of them are candidate specific, uh, but certainly all the candidates will have an opportunity to comment if they so choose, and others are, are general. So we start uh, with Mr. Catala. Um, uh, the, the question that came in uh, noted that during your current term of the Board of Education, you were censured by your fellow Board of Education members for failing to follow board procedures. If you can't work with a few fellow school board members, how can you effectively represent New London in the legislature? That's the question. It's a good question. Um, I think that the censure was, um, it happened to new board of ed, new processes, new things happening with the school board. I think, um, and I know that the fact of the matter that I like to take things and write, write factual letters to the editor of the paper, everything that I write in the paper can be fact-checked. Um, all of my comments at meetings, um, there, there's a lot of give and take as well. You know, there are people who come to our board meetings, and at the same time, you know, our board chair would be extremely disrespectful to those individuals to a point where they leave our district. So the censure to me, and I did write a letter, and I did respond in another article, really didn't mean anything. It meant to me that I was speaking up, um, and when I go to Hartford, you know, you're going to get the same Jason. You're going to get someone who's going to go up there, who's going to, who's going to be, as we say, maybe rustle a few feathers, maybe not go with the flow, but you know, at the bottom of the day, at the end of the day, when I, the, the decisions that I'm making are for the citizens of my town that I've lived my entire life. Okay, now. And now, Kat, you get 90 seconds for. Well, yeah. for that question, to talk about Jason. All right. <laughs> Again, the candidates, it's, you have the time. It's how you, you want to use it or not. You're not yeah. obligated to respond to every question. But this we is want to not going to get awkward at all. <laughs> um, well, um, I, I have been following Jason's career for the entirety of the time that I've been here in New London. Uh, I, I think it's incumbent upon us as voters, as residents, um, to, to know what our elected officials are doing. Um, I, I, I believe that part of the issue with Jason is that he used to be a Republican and is now a Democrat. And he, he switched, you know, in, in order, I, I believe, to get some more votes there. And that is where people question him on that. Uh, and when I was speaking earlier in my opening statement about consistency, I haven't changed parties, win or lose. And unfortunately for me, it's been lose because there aren't a lot of Republicans there. Um, I do have a very moderate platform. I believe that I have a history of advocating for everyone in the community, regardless of party. That said, I think that Jason's done a tremendous job on Board of Ed, and I would like to see him stay there. <laughs> so I don't want you to think this is just a, a be up. Uh, however, I think that we do need some consistency in Hartford. We need someone who can um, be effective and make change without necessarily digging in, the, digging in their heels and having to fight the other parties for it. Thank you, Kat. Now, Jason, you get another 30 seconds to respond. I just want to say that I, I, I was a Republican. And I was a very successful Republican. I, I won three terms to the Board of Education as a Republican. I won a term on the council as a Republican. I, when I was in my third run for Board of Ed as a Republican, I came within 10 votes of being the top vote getter. There were many reasons why I turned Democrat. My whole family is Democrat. They've been after me, hounding me since the day I turned 18 to be a Democrat. And I felt, lost the Board of Ed election by about 30 votes. That was the time to be a Democrat that my mother had been begging me and my family had wanted me to do. And I've been successful as a Democrat. Okay, thank you. 
Now, uh, Myrna Martinez, you get 30 seconds to discuss that question. Or any question that I choose, right? Um, I, I, think, I, I think it's important for every person to stand on their own merits and we can look at um, another individual's um, performance or behavior and, and, and everyone can judge for themselves. Um, I'm gonna say that for myself, um, I have served on th for three terms and I'm continually doing something that people tell me isn't possible. For instance, this last time, getting on as a third party member, um, it's not possible. Well, I'm here on the Board of Education and I've continually been able to work with different groups um, to be able to move forward. Um, thank you, Verna. Anthony Nolan, you get 30 seconds. <clears throat> How you doing, Jason? <laughs> hey, yeah. no, keep hanging. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm just going to say uh, something similar that Myrna said, um, but I'm going to say it because there are others up here that think that I shouldn't go up to Hartford because of my position at the police department. I've been a city council for seven years. I was elected city council president for two of those seven years. I know. <laughs> that nothing at that job that I do would stop me from going up to Hartford to do what I have done for New London for the past seven years. Thank you. Okay, we've made it through the first question. Now for the second question, Myrna Martinez will get 60 seconds, and then Anthony Nolan will get 90 seconds, and then uh, Myrna, you get 30 seconds again. And then Jason, you'll have 30 seconds, and Kat, you'll get 30 seconds. Okay? Hope we fall into a pattern here. We're going to have to uh, <laughs> go through it every time. Um, so uh, just a quick, before I ask the question we got from, from the readers, uh, Myrna, just kind of a quick yes or no, since you are on the Board of Ed. Uh, yes or no, did you, did you vote to censure uh, Mr. Catala? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so the second question we have uh, concerns uh, the Millstone Power Station and energy issues. Um, question, was the decision to change the rules on energy pricing to assure Millstone Station remain competitive the right one, or should the state instead be encouraging new forms of energy technology? Could you just repeat that one more time, please? Was the decision to change the rules on energy pricing to assure Millstone Station remain competitive the right one, or should the state instead be encouraging new forms of energy technology? Okay, um, I strongly believe that um, the state should be encouraging um, new forms of energy technology, um, and we are in the process of doing so. I think we have a great opportunity here with the state peer um, contract with um, with Ever EverSource and the Connecticut Port Authority. Um, Orscad is uh, one of the um, is is the is the wind um, power um, company that will be um, entering into an agreement to use this as a staging um, ground for for this uh, new power source here in our area. It's old in Europe, but it's something new in the area that we need to be going in. I think that it's really important for us to, when we look at cost, to not look just at the dollar amount that we're directly paying for energy, but that we're looking at the environmental impacts and the health impacts and looking at cost at a more, in a more holistic sense. So it's definitely important. Right now, the um, energy and technology committee in Hartford has received um, legislation. All right, I'll return. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Nolan, you get 90 seconds. Could you repeat the question, please? <clears throat> Was the decision to change the rules of energy pricing to assure Millstone Station remain competitive the right one, or should the state be instead encouraging new forms of energy technology? My opinion is that I believe that it was the right one, um, but I do believe that they should be encouraging some more um, new forms of energy. Um, but all the things that we have going on, especially as Marina said, down in state um, pair area, I believe that there are going to be some additions that will be available and some creative ideas going on that we would be able to work from. So that is my answer to that. 
Okay, thank you. And now, um, Myrna Martinez, you get 30 seconds. And, and, and Myrna, I just for the 30 seconds, uh, if you could, I didn't hear whether or not you supported the decision to prop up Millstone with the special praising. So if you could address that in your 30 seconds, I'd appreciate it. I think that the most important thing is the, but I, I would like to respond my way. I think the more important thing is to look at alternative sources of energy. Right now, the Energy and Technology Committee has received a concept to um, uh, to demand a 2,000 megawatts minimum for energy in the state, and I think that it's really minimal looking at what other states are doing, but absolutely vital. The Solar for All program has increased um, solar panels in, 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 for the black community, and that's been a great success, and this is the path that we need to be moving forward for more jobs in, in a futuristic way, not staying on the same thing. Okay, thank you. And Jason Cantala, you get 30 seconds. So I definitely think there needs to be alternative um, energy sources. The, off, the offshore wind energy, um, not only will it create 1,400 jobs, but it also will create um, choices for people. Uh, when I get my air resource bill and when I get my electric bill every month, I, I think I look at the different lines and the different places where money is going. And one, some of them I don't even understand. I just know that there needs to be a real clarification and there needs to, the options need to be spelled out to everybody. And that has to happen immediately so that people are not overspending money. Um, thank you. And then Kat, who are 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, yes to both questions. Yes, we should be supporting a local business. Those two are not, are not mutually exclusive. Um, and, I, and I mean more that they're a large employer than a local business. Uh, they are large employers in the area. They do provide a service. We don't have a magic wand that we can just wave and get into green energy at this moment. So we need to keep moving what we have, make sure that it, it is working well for us while we're developing those new technologies. Great, thank you. Now the third question, we'll begin with Jason getting 60 seconds, then Myrna getting 90, and then Jason getting 30 again. Um, uh this is a, a question in one form or another I got from quite a few of our readers, uh, and it's to Jason, correct? Um, yes. Do you have any ideas for reducing state spending or taxes? Yes. The first, thing, the first proposal that I would like to see happen in the state of Connecticut is um, to reduce the number of term limits for state representatives. Currently, term, state reps can serve for 10 years, get full, a full benefit package upon leaving office. Um, I did some research with 151 state representatives. Um, the number of them get their 10 years in, they retire, and we pay lifetime benefits for them. So I, I feel like, and what my goal would be is to get in six years, get my work done, and then step down. Um, right there, another thing would be to reduce the number of state representatives. We're relatively a small state. There's 151. We could cut down to 130. New London should not have two state representatives. One could cover the entire district. I think there needs to be commissioners. We have way too many commissioners. We could cut five to six of them would save a large amount of money that would cut taxes. Um, we have a number of uh, different commissioners. Um, overtime, there's a ton of people making exorbitant amounts of money in overtime that could be cut. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Myrna Martinez, you get 90 seconds. Sure, thank you. Um, Cuts, school construction reimbursement, I know that the governor has um, tagged that as something to cut, but I'd want to make sure that it's specifically cut for communities that are not aligned districts. In other words, if they have the tax revenue to be able to um, build, to have their new school constructions, and that's where it should be coming from. Those, those, the aids and the grants should be for communities like, like ours. Pilot and ECS, a similar situation. Um, pi Pilot, uh, the town of Farmington gets about the same as we get for pilot reimbursement, which is ridiculous. If you look at the two communities, they're vastly different. When we are looking for payment in lieu of taxes, it's because our base is much different than, than Farmington's. But I think I'm going to talk about revenue because revenue is, is just the other side of the same exact coin. Um, one place for us to increase taxes, just one, is a joint regional compact. Um, we can join um, a Governor Cuomo in New York um, and other and other um, community other states in closing the carried interest loophole. This alone would bring us 535 million dollars. Did you just show me a signal or no? 
Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, another idea for, for the revenue side is enforcement of current tax laws. Just enforcement of what we already have would bring us $40 million. Enforcement of current issues. And the last one that I'll bring up right now is increased personal income tax for the highest earners. Half a percent would bring us um, would bring us $217.3 million. Right there, we've closed our deficit gap. Um, thank you. And then, Jason, you get 30 seconds. So, um, I think that we also need to keep be cognizant of the, the different taxes that are, are going to be implemented. Um, I think the minimum, I'm definitely in favor of a $15 minimum wage uh, spread over time. I think it's going to be important, and we're looking to save on taxes, is that we should be um, looking at ways to the casino dollars and the lottery monies. Um, where those dollars are going, I was looking at a bar graph, and the, I don't believe that the state is using casino dollars and lottery dollars the right way. So if they were used appropriately, I feel like that we could be cutting taxes. Um, thank you. And then, Kat, you get 30 seconds. Great. Well, this is going to go quick. Uh, we have a lot of waste in Connecticut, and I, I have said a million times, and I will continue to say it, that we need to cut the wasteful spending. We have a lot of waste. It, it, is, it is everywhere, you know, you take the Springfield to Hartford Railway, for instance, or Hartford to Springfield, it costs us $26 million a year to operate that, and it's only generating $2.6 million in ridership. Um, that's the first place. Uh, having a state job should not be like hitting the lottery. I think we need to open up those contracts and renegotiate those as well, and I'm sure I'll get to touch on more later. Thank you. And then, Anthony, you get 30 seconds on that question. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? <coughs> Do you have any ideas for reducing state spending or taxes? Thank you. Uh, today's uh, Connecticut economy is based on services, particularly tech services. So the idea of why would we pay sales tax to, to, to buy that candy bar but not to visit an attorney's office? So my, uh, I think that we would have to start taxing services. To, to try and create that. Okay, Anthony, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the next question will go first to Anthony Nolan for 60 seconds, and then to Kat Goulart for 90 seconds, and then back to Anthony for another 30 seconds before Myrna and Jason each get 30 seconds. Um, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Nolan, so, um, not only in this uh, special election, but in the lead up to the election we had in, in November, I heard from many frustrated New London Republicans who feel their views about reducing the size of government and cutting taxes are ignored by the Democrats the city sends to Hartford. So I was wondering what you might have to say to them. Nothing. All right, thank you. That was a quick 60 seconds. Um, and Kat, you get 90 seconds for that question. Would you repeat the question one more time? Um, I was saying, in, in lead up to the November election also, in the special election, I heard from many frustrated New London Republicans who feel their views about reducing the size of government and cutting taxes are ignored by the Democrats the city sends to Hartford. And then I was wondering what the candidates might have to say to them. Well, a lot. Uh, I'm one of those frustrated Republicans who uh, feels as if she hasn't been heard. Uh, part of the job that a state representative, I mean, really, truly, the only job that we're sent to do is to represent our city in Hartford. And it is not to bring our own agenda. It is not to bring a party agenda or toe the line. It is to listen to what our constituents say. And by and large, the Democrat representation that we've had for 40 some odd years has not been doing that. You can see that by the rise in our property taxes, by the rise in all of the taxes across the state. And hardworking New Londoners are taxed and feed to death. And until we start at least acknowledging that there is a problem with that one party rule, we're going to continue to circle the drain. Um, thank you, Kat. And I'll give you another chance, Anthony. Would you like 30 seconds on that? When I vote 
and make decisions for the people of New London. I do it for everyone. Thank you. And then, Myrna, you get 30 seconds? 30 seconds is enough, but it's not enough. But um, I think the question here is not about too much government, it's about good government. We are number third in the country for likelihood for people to leave our state. And Vermont is number one in the country for people likely to come into the state. And it has to do with having um, a, a government that people want to come into, um, incentives to want to stay in the state or not leave the state. And I think there are plenty of issues that we can overlap with Republicans, and I know that we can overlap. I was on Steve Elsie's show the other day, and there was plenty that we, 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 we agreed with, and, and so I don't think it has to be a partisan issue. Um, thank you. And Jason Cattell, 30 seconds. For me, the big question is is um, how we uh, how we lead, how we take our, our concerns and the city's concerns to where they need to be. I, what rings my bell right now is the Board of Education over the last several years getting zero increases from a, from the city council. Um, we plead with every one of them. We, we this year we're back at it again. I feel like uh, perhaps. We need a better, we need more. We need more collaboration between the two bodies and also with our representatives in Hartford so that we could do the better for all of our people and our citizens in New London. Um, thank you, Jason. Okay, so we're on to the fifth question. And this one will go first to Jason for 60 seconds and then to Anthony Nolan for 90 seconds and then back to Jason for 30. And then Kat and Myrna will each get 30. A uh, question uh, uh, was, is basically, how would you vote if a bill to legalize recreational mar marijuana was raised in the legislature, and why? For me, I'm, that's a tough one for me, because I know people who smoke it. Um, I never smoked it in my entire life, um, so I don't know the benefits or the lack of benefits from it. Would I, if I'm in Hartford tomorrow and this bill comes up, I do not support it. I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I, I just, I've seen people who get addicted to it and they're, they don't work. You know, they, they get this lazy way about life. And I, I was doing some research, you know, there are benefits. I totally support medical marijuana. I just don't know that at any time as an educator, um, how can I support a drug that's been legal for, illegal for so long and then turn around and say, okay, it's okay, I, I'm a dear teacher. Um, don't smoke, no drugs, no drugs. I'm preaching it for 25 years now as an educator. I just feel like I would be a hypocrite to turn around now and say, it's legal, and then what are we gonna do with all the people who are in prison for it, and all the different people driving, and we, there's no way to test them if they get pulled over. There's just so many pieces to the puzzle. It's gonna happen, it's gonna be legalized, and I will support the bill when it happens, but I won't be the one voting for it. Um, thank you, Jason. Anthony Nolan, 90 seconds. I would not support this bill, though I would have some uh, items that I would like to see instilled into the bill because I do believe that it is going to pass. The items that I would like to see, of course, is fight for stricter regulations for our children. Um, I would also like to see those that aren't the millions and billionaires get some kind of piece of the pie in regards to the funds that the millionaires and billionaires always make when they control things. Um, I would fight for the release of those incarcerated on prior convictions of marijuana. I would fight to expunge records of those previously convicted of marijuana. I would fight for incentives, incentives for the industry to hire ex-offenders. I will fight for improved education studies for police and fire personnel to obtain a better message of detection for the marijuana. And finally, I will not put my, bill, my name on a bill that supports recreational marijuana. Thank you, Anthony. And Jason, you get 30 seconds more on that. So there definitely needs to be a lot of research on it, because as Mr. Nolan says, it's going to pass. It's going to, it's going to be, um, it's going to happen, and if we'll do some research, we'll look at Massachusetts. And look, the crime rate has gone up there. Look at Colorado. Um, crime rate absenteeism has gone up at work. All those things will have to be looked at, and they're gonna, it's going to happen. I'm not judging people who, who smoke it, um, but I, there'll have to be a very detailed bill about how we're going to go about regulating it, uh, selling it, or who's going to get the rights to sell it, 
where are you going to sell it? All those things have to be in place. Um, thank, thank you, Jason. And then Kat, you're next for 30 seconds. <coughs> Thank you. Um, for me personally, uh, with my law enforcement background and the program that I administer with FBI New Haven, uh, for me, it is a no. That said, when you're the state representative, it's not about what you want, it's about what your constituents want. And I believe the overwhelming majority of residents in this area are for legalization, and that is the way that I would vote in Hartford would be a yes. Um, thank you, Kat. And then Myrna? I need 10 minutes on this, please. Um, there's a group called, I'm joking, there's a group called, I think it's a lead and I can't remember exactly, but it's about law enforcement people who are um, for the decriminalization because they've seen firsthand the organized crime that comes about from allowing um, our, allowing the, allowing this to be a market that's underground. And so yes, I would be because I want regulation to be able to protect our kids and not have our hands tied to be able to protect our taxpayers, our community. And but I would want to make sure that it's something that's rolled out so that we do it right. We rolled out slowly. Thank you, Marina. Uh, the next question will go to Kat Pollard first for 60 seconds, and then to Myrna for 90 seconds, and then to Anthony, and then Jason. Do you support or do you oppose returning tolls to Connecticut highways? <laughs> this is a fun one. I am a staunch opposer of tolls. Until we even begin to address the waste that we have in our state government, the uh, you know things like that I, that I touched on earlier about the railway expenditures and the fact that it costs nearly a half a million dollars per road of highway to maintain our roadways here in Connecticut. Um, the fact that benefits packages are 33 times more generous in the state jobs than it is in the private sector, we absolutely cannot ask our residents to reach into their wallets for one more dime. Okay, and then Myrna, you get 90 seconds. I don't want to see tolls, but I think it's an inevitable piece due to our uh, $1.5 million deficit. I think we need to diversify our revenue intake um, and but I would want to know that our or I'd put every effort in to make sure that we are not um, taxing that, that we have tax abatements for or that we have um, reimbursements for people who are commuters for people who are residents even in New London I mean even Connecticut license plates um, I do want to take advantage of all the traffic that comes in here from the beaches in the summer um, we've got wonderful resources and people take advantage of them and so therefore we need to um, be taking care of our roadways I think another piece of this is making sure that our um, our way stations are properly um, taken care of and, and manned um, uh, it's a, a preventative for our for accidents and making sure that we don't have trucks that are overloaded and that they are paying um, for uses of roads. Um, it, it, it's really important though that we understand that this is not how we're solving our, our, um, our fiscal situation. Um, an incident report um, found that in 2011, 700, 725,000 households making less than $48,000 paid 23.6% of all of our taxes, as opposed to 15,000 households making $600,000 to 2 million paying 7.7% of our taxes. So we need to diversify. Um. Thank you, Myrna. And the, then Anthony, Nolan, you get 30 seconds on that. I, am I wrong? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to shortchange you, Ken. That's okay. Thank you. Um, two points I'd like to make. One is, even in the phrasing of the question, is do I think it's a good idea to go back to tolling? Just it, that, that idea itself tells you that tolling is regressive. We've already moved away from it. It's Super, super costly. I don't think that we need to return to it. And uh, I'll leave it there. I have another point that I will get out after. Okay, thank you. And now, Anthony, no one. Um, I believe we're all tired of paying for the damage from out-of-town out of town trucks that come through our highways and byways. And, um, I think that tolls are going to come eventually. Um, my idea that I received from some constituents on a few different occasions is that we only have tolls in the beginning and the end of Connecticut 
that we put speed traps in between to slow down traffic and to increase fines to make revenue for those who don't know how to slow down. Thank you, Anthony. And then Jason? I, don't, I do not support tolls um, in any, any fashion proposed. I think, uh, remember back in the early 2000s, gas was about 4.50 a gallon. Uh, all the business owners would get a, uh, and they still get it on a lot of their bills, uh, a fuel fee that they have to pay. Uh, I feel like with tolls in place for businesses, uh, and there'll be a toll fee on a lot of our small business owners, and that's an, an unnecessary uh, fee that would be put in place. Uh, I had a, was at a doctor's appointment the other day, and yeah, it went well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and the next question will go first to Kat for 60, Jason for 90, and then Kat for 30 again before Anthony and Ron each get um, You're all busy people um, holding uh, various positions on, on local boards, commissions, uh, and, and in addition to your, your work life. Uh, the question was uh, from a reader, if elected, do you plan to make any changes to the commitments you face in order to free up time to adequately serve in the legislature? All right. Um, I work for myself, for those who don't know. I've been self-employed in some way or another since I've been 23. Um, for those that know me, they'll probably, I would assume, tell you I volunteer more than I work. I love the community. I love to be out here. I love to be serving the people in any capacity. That said, my schedule is completely flexible. I have, uh, currently right now, I haven't even worked the last couple weeks. This is really, really important for me to be able to get out, to meet people, to do things. Uh, I'm juggling, unfortunately, a father that's in the hospital, and I'm doing this as well. I would continue to put my service first and foremost and work when I have time. You know, the job is, is Monday through Thursday during the day. You know, you, you have to make accommodations. This is a service position. It's not a windfall by any means. And I think that I have a heart to serve, and I, I would question the other folks here, as they are all holding city positions and everybody's got full-time jobs, whether they have the same amount of time to give. Um, thank you, Kat. And then Jason, 90 seconds. So I, I'd like to think that I'm really good at managing time, managing my time. Uh, I currently do have a full-time job in the New Haven Public Schools. I don't have a classroom. I could go half-time in that position. I would get rid of my two part-time jobs at a local package store and at the Covenant shelter. I would have to let those positions go. Um, as far as the school board, I would remain on the school board. And if I'm able to continue, if I'm able to do that and finish out my term on the school board and have a tight-knit family help at home, I would not rule out running again for school board. Um, but that I definitely would have time to go to Hartford. I would make time. Uh, it's, I'm going to be running if I didn't have a, a, a plan to do that. And so I, I definitely would have time and would make the time. Um, thank you, Jason. And Kat, you get 30 seconds longer? Uh, because it came up earlier, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. I have been outspoken about Officer Nolan not having time. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how he uses his 30 seconds. Uh, because he has had a history of not, even not fulfilling the council duties and going to the, the committee liaison assignments over these last couple of years. So I'm curious how it is that you would be able to fit three jobs now into that same amount of time. Okay, Anthony, you have 30 seconds to respond. Seven years, two years, City Council President and my peers on the City Council <coughs> felt that I was doing a great job. I choose the overtime that I use at work. For this, I will have to stop overtime. For this, I will resign for council. Though I don't have to because the state says that I can do both, I would resign from council. That's it. Um, thank you, Anthony. And Myrna? 30 seconds? 
I would continue to be a staunch advocate for policy as I have been in the past on the Board of Education. I have a flexible schedule. I would continue and complete my term on the Board of Education. I have amazing family support who's um, sitting in the audience. My husband is incredible at supporting my work. My mother lives downstairs from us and is also amazing with our children. My parents-in-law as well and my children, my little children are champions for the work that I do. My daughter begged me to run. Thank you, Myrna. Okay, the next question starts with Anthony for 60 seconds, Myrna for 90, and then Anthony for 30 before Kat and Jason each get 30 seconds. So um, this is one of those candidate-specific questions uh, I received, and, um, um, and we'll you know, leave it up to the other candidates if they want to also comment on it. Uh, Mr. Nolan, we, we received a letter to the editor from the chairperson for the Senior Affairs Commission, Karen Paul, and she wrote, uh, Nolan's performance as council liaison to the commission has been disappointing. He did not attend our meetings, was often inaccessible, and didn't immerse himself in the issues important to seniors. And she goes on in this letter, urge people not to support you. Uh, for those reasons, and I wanted to give you a chance to respond uh, to what she said in the letter. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> First of all, Karen Paul knows well that my mother has cancer. And I already told her that I would not be able to make those readings just for that reason. Karen Paul is not the only senior in the city. I have went around personally to meetings and to attend things with seniors to deal with some of the things that I've needed to for senior affairs. If you um, need a list of, of times I've been to the senior center to correct things there because of the things that they went through, I can provide that to you. But Karen Paul, I expect that from her. Um, no hardship against her, but that's how Karen Paul is. Um, thank you, Anthony. And then, Myrna, you get 90 seconds. I must say this is a difficult one because I do not intend to run a negative campaign. It's not my style. Like I said, I believe in running on my own merit, but it, um, for the sake of transparency, when asked directly a question like this, I, I think I do need to be honest. Um, I, as when I've served as board of board president, I did find it difficult to, um, to communicate um, with Anthony Nolan um, regarding his his time. He had on, on the day of the first reading of voting for the budget, um, when I approached him after trying to chase him down to um, to answer any questions or bring responses back to him that I couldn't answer. Um, he told me that he didn't hadn't read the budget and that it was okay. It was um, it was just to show the public that we were moving forward. Um, and there were other concerning um, situations regarding uh, uh, um, knowing and understanding of the um, of the issues. Um, but um, yeah, like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, honestly an uncomfortable one for me because um, I do believe that. Um, that I, I would want people to look at me not in comparison necessarily to someone else, but um, based on my own merits, my own um, ability to research, to gather information from others, from resources, my um, <coughs> immense dedication to the time that I've put in, not just to um, the issues that I am, um, I am assigned, but those that all of those that surround and end up making the complete puzzle. Um, thank you. And then Anthony, get another 30 seconds to respond. All I can say is that for seven years, two years as city council president, I've done my job. That's all I can say. It doesn't take 30 seconds to say that. Okay, so Kat, you get 30 seconds, and then Jason. Conversations like this are uncomfortable, but I think that they're important to have to evaluate who does and who does not have time to dedicate to this position, and I'm not trying to pile on you, Anthony, but I've been actively involved in issues with the New London Housing Authority for a number of years, and in the time that Mr. Nolan has been the liaison, I've been there more than he's not, or more, I have been there rather more than he has. 
Um, and, and that is disappointing as a, as a resident. I'm not being paid to be there. I'm doing it for love of community. And, and it is tough when we have someone who's being paid to be there that's not. Um, thank you, Kat. And then Jason, you get 30 seconds. For me, it's important to talk about my, my service. Um, people do have things that come up. Um, the only board meeting that I did miss was when my mom passed away in my 14 years of service and my two years in the council. So things do come up, and that has to be respected. But for me personally, I don't miss meetings. I go to my meetings. Um, for some time, I was on policy curriculum and all um, different kinds of committees. I didn't miss, I missed a few curriculum committee meetings. But right now, I haven't missed a policy meeting since I've been chair of the policy. My record, I go to meetings, I was elected to do that, um, but I'm not going to talk about other people's records. Okay, we're on to the next question. So Myrna will get 60 seconds, and then Jason will get 90, and then Myrna will get 30, before Anthony and Kat each get 30. We have two candidates uh, in this race who are not running on major party lines. We have a petitioning candidate and a Green Party candidate. So I'd like to ask those two candidates how effective can they be uh, given that they will have no party colleagues to work with? Uh, also, would they seek to caucus with either party and if so, which one? Um, I would caucus with the Democrats, and obviously there are a bunch of other caucuses to join, like the Black and Puerto Rican caucus, and the Progressive caucus, and the Women's Crowd caucus, which is growing um, to, you know, growing and happily growing and um, becoming more robust in identification of, um, of, of, of women. Um, and, um, but I must tell you, looking again, looking at my past um, service here in the Board of Education, there were times, I think specifically my first term, where it was difficult to move something along because of my party affiliation. But I found other ways, as in um, uh, engaging with other groups who had similar agendas, but using my, my pulpit as a board member to get things done. There's more than one way to skin a cat, and there's, um, I also do know that there are a lot of legislators that are, that are willing and excited to be working with anyone who agrees with them on their issues to help move, um, help move issues forward. Um, thank you, Marina. So, Jason, you get 90 seconds on that question. So, in, looking, in watching today's budget um, proposal by the governor today and get, getting to see the Democrat responses and the Republican responses, um, I'm a Democrat um, just on the petitioning line because of the process not being able to primary. So, I would be caucusing with the Democrats on my, my record on the Board of Education. I think it's beneficial that I did have time, six years as a Republican Board of Education member and two years as a Republican City Councilor, and then in my fourth year is serving as a Democrat Board of Education member. So I have the experience working with both parties. I was a Republican, I was voted Secretary of the School Board, um, so I, I know how to work with both aisles. Um, I, I believe that there was a question talking about bipartisanship um, that we received from the day on an issue. And I feel like that all issues that come forward, you know, you caucus with your Democratic team, and then you come out and you vote, whether it's with the Republicans or not, uh, with the Democrats, you vote for what is right for the town that you live in. And that's how I like to consider myself, as being a bipartisan person, but I would be caucusing with the Democrats. Um, thank you, Jason. And then that goes back to you, Myrna, for another 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, I want to remind us that when the governor-elect um, had his inauguration, he called on Connecticut to, or all of us on Connecticut, to reinvent Connecticut. Um, in a sense, that's part of the voice that I am here to do. I, um, I come from a different party, and I have the ability to come in and do what I need to do in order to re be a part of reinventing Connecticut. There are problems with the process that we've seen, and yet I've been able to surmount and get um, CEP funding. Um, and, and I've been testifying for years in Hartford, and I do have connections up there. Um, thank you. And then Anthony Nolan. You get 30 seconds, and then Kat gets 30 seconds. For seven years, the same people have complained about Anthony Nolan not being able to do certain things. For seven years, the people of New London have elected me to do a job that I believe that I have done great. So I look forward to becoming your next state representative. 
Thank you. And then Kat. Thank you. Uh, I think this question also uh, can be applicable to a Republican. You know, we are a blue city, we're in a blue state, and you have to be able to find that middle ground with people in order to get along. You can't just dig your heels in and, and become part of the problem. Uh, I, I would welcome working with people of all parties. I would welcome representing New London. And um, additionally, I think that we, um, you know, we have a lot of headway to make. And um, to your seven years, Anthony, I, our taxes have gone up immensely in that time. So I wouldn't be bragging about that. Okay, time for the next question. We'll go first to Kat for 60 seconds, and then to Anthony for 90, and then to Kat for 30 before Jason and Murdoch each get 30. Uh, if elected, what role would you play as a legislator to assure New London is treated fairly as it sees increased commercial use of its port and potentially as a staging area for the wind farm development? All right, well that sort of plays on the other, uh, the question that we just had is, uh, you know, being able to work with people and be, being able to find those common middle, that common middle ground. Um, I believe that I, I have a good knowledge of what New London needs. I've been very actively involved in following our budgets, the taxes, and you know all of the things that, that are big headline issues for us here. Um, taking that knowledge to Hartford is important. Uh, you have a good knowledge of the community and what we need, and making sure that we get everything that, we're deserved, that we are owed from Hartford. That means all of our pilot money. That means all of our ECS money because all of these things, if we don't get them from Hartford in, in the quantity or the, the dollar amount that we're supposed to, that's another point or another mill increase for us. All of those things really affect us. And um, you know we need to make sure that we're getting that without also going broke at the same time and paying tolls and more taxes and all of these other things. And instead of running over, I will finish with my next time. <laughs> And then Anthony, no one, you get 90 seconds on that. Could you repeat the question, please? Certainly. Um, if elected, what role will you play as a legislature, a legislator, to assure New London is treated fairly as it sees increased commercial use of its port and potentially as a staging area for wind farm development? Okay. Um, first, I'd like to recognize how hard the mayor worked when he went up to Hartford was aggressive, um, getting them to agree to uh, give funding back to us from the state. I think he did a wonderful job. And I think that with the next phase that we have to deal with the $20 million that we're going to be um, trying to figure out who's going to uh, make the moves with that, um, that we will be able to get another piece of that pie when that time comes. Um, and then with the many uh, corporations that might come in and try and uh, take a piece of that area down there, I believe that we will be able to get some more funding from them down there also. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Um, then this goes to Jason for, and then Myrna. I'm, so, I'm sorry, back to Kat for 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, the last piece of that that I wanted to speak about was the Crystal Avenue property. It's a very valuable piece of property. It's very near the port. The mayor and the governor have already come out as saying that they're working on a deal with that and that they've been working on it for a while. I would like to make sure that New London makes out on the better end of that and that we don't sell it to the state and hope and pray and keep our fingers crossed that they'll give us pilot money but that moreover it is either leased or sold to a for-profit company so that we are receiving the best financial benefit we can of that. Thank you, Kat. Uh, Jason? Can you say that question again, please? <clears throat> uh, if elected, what role will you play as a legislator to assure New London is treated fairly as it sees increased commercial use of its port and potentially as a staging area for wind farm development? I think I'm going to expand that question a little further as how we'll be treated fairly on a number of different revenues, possible sources. Um, I definitely am looking at the Crystal Avenue area and making sure that, I mean, that area can be a really a robust area along close, so close to Riverside Park. So if, if there are funds put into Riverside Park, I mean, we could really make some, some good dollars using Riverside Park, cleaning it up. Um, it's right down by the water. 
Um, I also think local colleges should be pitching in a little bit more. I know that the mayor and the city council has done a really nice job because in the past we didn't get anything, and now we're getting a, a certain amount of dollars now, so we really should work on that. Um, thank you, Jason. And then Maria? Yeah, in 30 seconds, thank you. I will, the one idea is um, building on, in, Joe Courtney, um, uh, Congressman Courtney, Senator Murphy, and Senator Blumenthal in, 19, in um, 2014 secured or helped secure a Tiger Grant as a transportation um, integration grant. Um, and in 2016, um, there was a groundbreaking for this, and there was a building of infrastructure, uh, rail infrastructure, in order to have it so that our cargo, um, our, our, our cargo um, was able to increase per car to 285,000 um, pounds per. And, and I'd like to build upon thank this. Yeah, thank you, Marina. As a crossroad. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds goes by quickly. Uh, the next question will go first to Anthony Nolan for 60 seconds, and then to Jason Catala for 90 seconds, and then Anthony again for 30 seconds, before going to Myrna and then Kat. Uh, Governor Lamont today uh, called for expanding the sales tax uh, to most everything that's now excluded, uh, professional services, digital downloads, uh, personal services such as barbers, beauty salons, veterinarians, uh, renovations and home repairs, to name a few. Uh, would you support this approach uh, to raise additional revenue? I think that goes back to what I said earlier about revenue and how Connecticut uh, doesn't uh, get any money from service. Um, I think in taxing services, that is going to help uh, close the gap um, on the revenue side. I believe that I will be supporting that. And I just think that that is a way for us to um, build um, and do things that would be similar to paying taxes on candy bars. Um, it just closes the gap between the things that we're paying for now. It equals the playing field. Um, thank you, Anthony. And then Jason for 90 seconds. So the state of Connecticut really does need to look at, it is a mess. It's ridiculous. I have the list on my phone here. There's hundreds of things on here. Um, expand taxes to boarding and training, waste collection, hotel and tourism. You, you, everything's going to be taxed. Will I support all of these? Absolutely not. Are there some that maybe I would support? The question came up, would I support um, ammunition, or maybe a 10% increase uh, tax on ammunition? There's, my, there's an area that might be taxed. Um, but everything here, you know, we have people, uh, my doc, back to my doctor's appointment story, I was at a doctor's appointment, and the doctor was telling me that his next patient can't come in because they, don't have, they can't get there, because the, the bus takes two hours to get there, the local transit bus and they don't have the $2 fee to get there because they got to switch several different times. So then it, back to taxing. Textbooks, college, for professional um, schools, everything is going to be taxed. If, you're gonna, if anybody's going to support all of these taxes, then they should not be going up to Harvard. Um, I will not be supporting these. I'm looking even in, here in New London. You know, we're paying a stormwater fee. I know a local business owner who pays $4,000 twice a year, and they're, they're pitching into our um, economy here in New London. So at some point, and my whole theme this whole time is, is enough is enough. We're just taxing people out of our state and our city, and it has to stop. So I'll support some of these, but there's no way you can support all of those. It'd be ridiculous. People have to, we have to look at how we're spending our money. We have to look at staffing numbers. Oh, thank you, Jason. That's great. Um, and then Anthony, you get 30 seconds. I agree with what Jason said in regards to not being for everything. Um, I think that's like saying that there's going to be grocery tax. Um, as you can see, um, there's no grocery tax. I don't know where that came from, but I know that someone said that I was for grocery tax. But there are no grocery tax. Um, so of course it's not going to be for everything on the list, and it usually never is. So it's just things that you have to decide when you get up there. Okay, thank you. And then Myrna, 30 seconds. 
30 seconds. I do agree on some of the um, expansion of sales tax. For instance, the sales tax for um, storage of boats, I think that's more of, a, of, a, of an income um, situation. I do believe in a more progressive income. That does not seem to be in this budget a raise in the income tax. And again, like the previous ideas that I shared with you, I do believe that for the higher brackets that are paying millions of dollars, that, that have millions of dollars in income, should be um, paying a, a fair share of their income tax. Um, thank you. And then Kat, 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, as I stated before, I am for cutting waste before I am for increasing taxes or adding new taxes. And that list is expansive. Even, you know, I mean, we're, we're sponsored by the day and there's a newspaper tax proposed in there. Um, there are several different types of groceries. Uh, a candy bar, you certainly can buy at the grocery store. Sweetened beverages, that's juices and sodas, and a lot of these we call sin taxes. We can generate billions of dollars every year. If we are not spending it properly, then we'll only continue to have to tax more. Um, thank you, Kat. Uh, the, the last question of the night before we have our closing statements. Uh, this will start with Bruno Martinez for 60 seconds, and then Kat Billert for 90 seconds, and then Marina again for 30, before Jason and Anthony each get 30 seconds. <clears throat> if financial help was needed from the legislature to make the Coast Guard Museum a reality in the selected location, would you support it? One more time, please. If financial help was needed from the legislature to make the Coast Guard Museum a reality in the selected location behind Union Station, would you support it? I support the Coast Guard Museum in another location. Um, it, is, uh, it is ignoring of environmental situations, leaving it where it is right now. Um, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense. At, at all for us to continue in that location. I think that we could um, take advantage of not only, um, we could take advantage of a parking issue, parking situations and to traffic flow and um, not have to worry about the environmental impact having it on a location that wasn't so busy and aggressive. We have to think of follow the money and see why is it that we're putting it where, where the proposed location is right now. And then Kat for 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, that's a tough question because how much financial support are we talking about? Is it you know a couple million? Is it 50 million? I think we need to be cognizant that the Coast Guard Museum, regardless of location, will be really, really good for New London. It'll bring a lot of people in. Um, you know, in, in addition to you know celebrating the Coast Guard tradition that we have here, I and mean, we are an official Coast Guard city, so we can't turn our back on that because it might cost us a little bit. That said, you know, this is where my middle of the road approach comes in. Uh, we need to be aware that what we're spending, because the state is us, we can ask for state money all day long, but we need to be aware that we are the state. So every dime we get from the state is potentially another dime that comes out of our pockets. So I'd like to look at that number. Yes, I would support it within reason would be my answer. Thank you, Kat. And now, Myrna, you get another 30 seconds on that? I think this goes back to something similar to what I said before about um, environmental impact not just being, or, or cost not just being a flat cost, but looking at the other impacts that, that, that accumulate the entire cost of something, and this is one of those situations. I wonder if this is something that we can take to referendum. That would be an interesting way to um, resolve this and see what the community believes on, on this issue. But I personally have huge concerns. Well, thank you. And then Jason, 30 seconds. So in my 14 years on the board, the, the word reality when it came to school buildings never really became a reality at times. You know, we were, we were supposed to be much farther along in our magnet plan. So if, if it was going to be an actual reality that the, the Coast Guard Museum was going to be built, and that, that I would definitely support funding from the state to build the Coast Guard Museum uh, in its current place. Thank you. And then Anthony Nolan. Uh, I do support the Coast Guard, but I would have to know a little bit more about the numbers that you're talking about in regards to what they would be. Um, but yes, I do support the Coast Guard. Thank you. And now it's time for closing statements. 
Uh, and this will go in reverse alphabetical order. So it'll be Anthony and Nolan first, Myrna Martinez second, Kat Goulart, and then Jason Catala. And they each get 60 seconds. So Anthony. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming this evening. And I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and Dave once again for having this event so that people can come out and hear what the candidates have to say. Um, I'd like to also uh, thank Chris Soto, um, even though his shoes will be big to fill. I am honored to have his endorsement. Um, as a school resource officer, a peace officer, I understand the safety and concerns of the New London residents. Uh, being on city council, I navigated seven budgets. Um, I know how state aid will be positive for the community. And uh, nine years ago, tragedy in our community, which divided us, happened. I was part of the New London Youth Talent Show, helped bring the community together again. I'm ready to be state rep. I will keep open doors and open ears and bring your concerns to Hartford. Thank you once again. I hope you vote for me on February 26th. Thank you, Anthony. And then Nerda Martinez. Again, yes, thank you, um, everyone, for being here tonight. I do want to go back, because I find it so important, my beginning as a, um, a teacher, um, that the recommendations that I put um, forth for revenue recommendations are those from the Connecticut Voices for Children, and they have many more beyond that that are really worth us looking at as a community. Um, I also would like to thank Chris Soto. Um, he supported my, my previous run, and um, I don't believe that I would be here in this seat as easily um, um, if it weren't for him, um, I was happy to vote for, on, for him during this last term on the green line um, due to his support. And I have no grudge for him at this point needing to go along with the, with, with the, party, the party choice. Um, uh, I, I, I am really excited to um, look to have the opportunity to possibly be your, your first woman representative at, in the state legislature, and I hope that you can support um, my common sense, humane solutions for our state. Thank you, Rena. And Kat Goulart. Thank you all again for coming out, and thank you to the day and League of Women Voters. Uh, it was a good time, as always. Um, I know that some of the things that I've said tonight might have been hard to hear, uh, I have tremendous love and respect for the three individuals up here with me, but I also have tremendous love for my city. And I think until we're being honest with the direction that we've been headed in, we're never going to change. We'll never have the money to thrive. We'll never have money individually and as families to live our best lives. And that is what I want for all New Londoners. And I, I would relish the opportunity to be able to take my service and my love of service and to represent New London in Hartford. I have been doing it for a number of years. I would welcome doing it as a state representative for New London. And I encourage you all to listen to what you've heard tonight, uh, take what you know from us out in the community, and to not necessarily look on just a party line because I am a Republican, um, but, it, but I enjoy that cross endorsement as, a, um, as an independent and to vote with your hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. And last, Jason Catala. Thank you again for holding this. Um, uh, we're talking about people who endorsed on Ernest You and our 12-year state representative has endorsed me in my candidacy for this seat. Um, I'm a Democrat outsider going in looking to clean up Hartford. Um, it's a mess, and as I mentioned earlier, I don't want my 12-year-old daughter to grow up with all of these taxes and with all of this mess. Um, I don't plan to stay there long if elected six years clean up the mess and leave. Um, growing up, we didn't have much. Uh, single parent, but we had a close-knit family. Um, we made do with what we had, and we did the best that we could. Um, I still go, remember going to get gas. We had 50 cents, we went to Hess, put 50 cents gas in, and we got to McDonald's where we needed to go. And, and we, were, we were very pleased. You know, people are, are living in, new, are, are having problems. You know, all these taxes are just gonna make it harder for people. It's gonna make it harder for the, all classes. Um, so that's the reason why I'm going. Um, and then again about the term limits. That's all. And now a round of applause.